no nice sunrise this morning. Just dark, cold, and wet here in Ontario, Canada. Let's go fix some chainsaws. Good morning. Welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. Next saw on the bench is going to be this MS-362 with a running issue. Let's go to the bench. What are these doing on my bench? Still MSA-81s. Nice saws, but I'm not working on these today. And I need my workbench. That's better. Welcome back to my workbench. Today we have the Steel MS362. Customer says that it is low on power and he dropped it off with some old air filters and some new air filters. Let's find out what the problem is. So I'll just do a quick visual of the saw. Um, the chain looks newer. The bar looks, um, the barn chain looked to be in, in good condition. Um, the chain needs to be sharpened. The rakers need to be taken down a bit. Um, I can't actually move the chain by hand. It's really tight, but I should be able to move it and I can't. So maybe something else is wrong here. Plastics, handles, um, nothing's broken. The recoil is stuffed with sawdust, like really dirty. So we're gonna to have to take this all apart and clean it. Chain catcher is there. So visually it looks, it looks okay, just dirty. And judging by the look of that air filter, probably in need of a very good service and cleanup. So let's, uh, let's get started here. I'm going to take the bar and chain off the saw, just make it a bit easier to work on. Um, if you hang around for a bit, my customer is actually coming to pick these up today. So I'm going to uh, fire these up. So um, you'll see the first start out of the box on them. Those are steel MS881s. These are actually the biggest saw that you can buy in North America. One of those is the equivalent of two of these. So I've got 36 inch bars and chains to put on both of them. So we are going to fire them up, put the bars and chains on them and get them ready for pickup shortly. So I've got the clutch cover off. Um, first thing I notice, like wet sawdust. So the saw is probably oiling just fine, which we will verify. I, I uh, loosen the tension. So the chain will turn now. Now, if, if he was cutting with it that tight, that would definitely be causing him an issue. The saw would be fighting that. But whether he was cutting with it tight or whether he tightened it before he brought it here, I don't know. All I know is the way I found it, the chain was so tight I couldn't actually turn it on the bar. So I'm just going to pull the bar and chain off here so I can have a better look. The rim sprocket is quite worn, so that'll need replacing. There's a lot of noise and play here. There's a needle bearing in behind this. I'm going to look closer at that too. May need a little bit of maintenance here. This saw, he's been running it, I think he said for f five or six years and hasn't really done anything to it. So we'll just, we'll give it a good look over here. So I want to take this thing outside and I want to see if I can hear it run. I'm just going to check the fuel, make sure there's fuel in it and see what it looks like. There's lots of fuel in it. Just looking at the color, looking for water. 
I don't see any water. The fuel smells, smells fresh. It's nice and clean in there. I don't think we have a fuel issue. I'll just dump it out anyway so we can have a quick look at it. I know you can't see it very well in here, so I'll put it in a clear glass jar. One of my pickle jars. I don't see any water in it. The cover looks good. Little bits of dirt, which is normal. Some hair. I'm gonna put his fuel back in it because when I test it, I wanna test it with his fuel. I'm gonna check to make sure there's bar oil in it. There was quite a buildup of dirt around it, so I just took it over and I just blew it off well. You don't want, if you can save a bunch of dirt from falling in there, it's a good idea. Yep, she's full of bar oil. I'm gonna pull the top cover off this and just have a quick look because it did arrive with a piece of a completely stuffed air filter. So I just wanna see what's under there and then we'll go outside with it. Yeah, very dirty, lots of dust. This air filter is completely stuffed. The air fins are, are stuffed. This whole saw is a filthy mess. So when he dropped it off, he handed me this, which is the outer air filter, which would have been on there. So it's stuffed. The inner is stuffed. This would definitely make the saw not run properly. And oftentimes when the air filters plug like this, the spark plug will also be fouled. So to start off here, I'm not gonna change anything. I'm gonna take it outside. I'm actually gonna go to the door because it's pouring rain out. And I'm gonna just try to start it so I can replicate the issue. And then we're going to um, go through these simple things and uh, we'll go from there. So I'll meet you over at the door. hooked up my spark tester so while I'm here I might as well just check for spark before we go back to the bench so we're looking in here for spark oh. okay I'll take my spark tester back off and I'll just fire it up again So we know that the 362 will run hard to start but we got it going um maybe not a big deal this could be a combination of a dirty air filter a fouled spark plug and the saw needing a very good cleaning um, we're going to find out but first i have to get these 881s ready because my customer is on the way to pick them up so let's get those done right now and then we'll get back to this These are huge saws. I'm 
look at the size. If you've never seen one of these in person, these are unbelievably big. These are huge. I'm going to take the clutch cover off and then we're going to put gas and bar oil in them. Make sure they're oiling. Put gas and oil in it. Okay, let's go fire them both up. Make sure they're oiling. Now put the bars and chains on them. Probably I'm not starting these, I'm going to say. Here's the A81s with their 36 inch bars and chains. The saws have been tuned and they're ready for pickup. Okay, those MS A81s are gone. That was two days ago. Let's get back to the 362. First thing I'm gonna do is check the spark arrestor in the muffler. I'm gonna take this air filter off and pull that spark plug out. The spark arrestor on this saw has a T27 holding it in. Actually, that spark arrestor is not a T27, it's a T20. So 
Spark arrestor is perfectly clean, so that's not our running issue. I'm going to go ahead and pull the spark plug out of this, and then we'll have a look down the cylinder with the camera. If you've ever loosened a spark plug, and then sometimes you can kind of wind it the rest of the way out with your fingers easily, and sometimes you can, it kind of feels sticky in there. So this one feels sticky. And I often see that when a saw has been running with a dirty air filter, they'll have a carbon buildup on the plug and around the threads. So this one feels, it's not cross threaded, but it feels sticky coming out. And that's what I expected to see. Just a dirty, fouled up carbon spark plug. But when you run an air filter that dirty, that's very common. Take a quick peek down the cylinder. Hmm. Let me grab my camera and I'll show you what I see. Let's go down the hole for inspection. So here we're seeing the top of the piston. There is some carbon buildup. With how dirty his air filter was, this saw would have been running rich, which would cause this carbon buildup. The cylinder walls look good. Sometimes the cylinder walls will have like factory cross hatching and sometimes they look like this, but there's no scoring, just normal wear. This is a heavy use saw, um, but it, it looks good in here. He should just uh, probably clean his air filter once in a while. Okay, so the um, piston and cylinder, a little bit of carbon buildup, but it looks good in there. So let's go ahead and do a compression test. I've got my echo compression tester hooked up. Um, I've got my decompression valve pulled out and I'm going to leave it in the out position for this test. I'm going to hold it on full wide open throttle and we'll get a compression reading. Okay, looks like we're just under 150. Lots of compression. After having a look in the engine and doing the compression test, I don't think this saw has an air leak. I think this is a case of a dirty air filter, a fouled spark plug, and a saw that's just in need of some general maintenance and cleanup. So I'm going to pull the recoil off the saw and clean it up really well, replace the spark plug, replace the air filter, and um, I, think, I think it's just going to be some basic maintenance needed here. So before I take this saw out and clean it up, I'm going to put the new spark plug in. I don't want anything going down that hole. So I've got a new BPMR7A NGK for it here. I trust these, the gaps on these NGKs out of the box. I've never seen one not gap properly, but for your viewing pleasure, I will check the gap, 20 thou, perfect. New plug going in. Something else about spark plugs. So this is the BPMR7A I took out of the chainsaw. And here's just an example of another BPMR7A with a solid top. And this one has the screw top, this is the one that came out of the saw. In chainsaws, I prefer to use the solid top, which is what I just put in this. I have seen these screw top ones. This is soft, and I have seen the wire on the coil actually eat through these. So if you're getting a new spark plug, probably don't get one of those for your saw. Get a solid one. I should add that I believe there are some older saws of other brands that may require you to take this off um, and to clamp on to that so 
that could be the case for something else, but in the case of this saw, we're using a solid top spark plug. I'm gonna take the recoil off the saw and get it ready for cleaning. One of my recoil screws had so much dirt packed in it that I couldn't get my tool properly in there. You could strip it. So I just took a pick, cleaned most of it out, and then I was able to get in there properly. So you can see how dirty everything is. It's going to all be cleaned up. Everything is just packed in dirt. So the saw draws its air in through the recoil, the slots in the recoil. And you can see uh, how plugged up this is. This is no good. It's a good way to wreck your saw. I'm going to get this all cleaned up. This and the saw. This plastic piece on this saw just pries out of the recoil. That'll make this easier to clean. I'm going to go outside to my compressed air. I'm going to take this little brush with me and this little screwdriver and get this all cleaned up. I'll be right back. Now that I've got this cleaned up that I can see it better, there is one screw for the felling spike missing. So that'll need to be replaced. And up in there, there's supposed to be like a donut style AV mount and it's just missing, disintegrated. There was so much dirt though, you, you couldn't tell if it was there or not. This is an interesting mark on the front of it here. It's like grinded right into the case. I wonder if a saw was stuck in a tree. Sometimes you get a, tr a saw stuck and you use, it, use another saw to cut it out. And maybe the tip of the bar, you know, grinded that out. Not really sure. Hmm. Recoil, all nicely cleaned up. I'm put this back together. I took this little piece off for cleaning. That just slips in there. So what that is, as air goes in through your air fins, the flywheel's turning, air enters through here, through that hole, and into the air filter chamber. So the idea of this is to keep fresh air coming in towards the air filter at all times. I think this was originally um, a design by Partner or Husqvarna and um, now still uses it as well. Let's put the recoil back on. It's Saturday morning here, so we're probably gonna get busy right around now. I'll see how far I can get with this. Okay, I'm gonna take this air filter 
off and put a new one on. There's a little bit of dirt that got past that completely stuffed air filter. I'm going to close the choke, take it outside and just give it a light blow off. I'll be right back. So this 362 has an inner and an outer air filter. So this goes on first and the outer one slides on. So the idea is you can take this off, clean it. So there's the two new ones. Here's the old outer, or the, sorry, the old inner. So you can see light through the new one. You can see how dirty the old one is. And the outer piece, there's the new one. And there's the old one. Not seeing any light through that. Yes, if you were in a jam, you could clean these up. The customer provided new air filters and wants new air filters installed. Okay, so I've got this all cleaned up. Now the saw has ingested some dirt, obviously, but there's not much I can do about that now. Um, keeping your air filters clean, very important. So let me just put this back on. I'm back. Put this air filter on. Just had a fella drop off a Husqvarna 266 XP and a Husqvarna 570. So they'll be on the bench next week. So that's our inner on. There's our outer. Put the top cover back on. I've cleaned it all up. It was completely caked in sawdust and dirt. Okay, it's been three hours since I put the top cover on. We're closed now, so I should be able to get this saw done. I'm going to put a new fuel filter in it. The customer requested all new filters. New fuel filter. So this is what the filter looks like that I put in. And this is the exact same filter, but probably seven or eight or more years old. You can see the difference. It doesn't hurt to change these once in a while. So the customer dropped this off for a running issue. Um, I'm going to quote him on the missing AV mount. And it needs some some th there's play in the drum so i'll quote him on this work i'll quote him on the av mount but for now i'm going to put the barn chain back on this take it outside and see how it runs and see how it cuts Okay, bar and chain back on. Let's go outside and see how it runs and see how it cuts. I'll meet you out there.
Okay, so the 362 starts good, runs excellent. So that wood that I'm cutting back there, that is a hard wood. I don't know if it's maple or oak, but it's a very hard wood and it's excellent for this sort of thing because you really push the saws when testing them. Um, I should mention too, I didn't catch it on camera, but earlier we noticed that the spike was missing one screw and I did replace that. Um, so I'm gonna quote him on the clutch drum. I'm sure he'll fix it, but I just have to give him a call first. But it was here for a running issue. The running issue has been resolved. I'm gonna quote him on a clutch drum, a rim and a needle bearing. They're all quite worn. So the case is closed on the steel MS-362. The verdict is a dirty air filter, a fouled spark plug, and just a dirty plugged up saw in general is not good. Keep your saws clean, keep your air filters clean, keep your chain sharp. Not a bad idea to change your fuel filter once in a while either. A clean and sharp saw is a happy saw. This saw is happy again. Maybe I'll see it back here in seven years. I have lots of chainsaws waiting for me. Why don't I take you over there and I'll show you what's coming up next. So I have an O28 and O38 extravaganza coming up ahead of me here. And then yesterday I had this Husky 266 dropped off. I had this Husky 570 dropped off. And there is a steel 018. So there is what's ahead of us next week. On the right of my screen, you're seeing new equipment that is up for sale. Wait till you see what came in the last two days for service on the left of my screen. My last video, there was maybe, I don't know, 10 of them sitting here. This came in in a day. And there's more over there too. You're probably going to say, wow, there's a lot of Cub Cadets there. So I'm a Cub Cadet dealer. So a lot of people bring their machines in every spring to have basic maintenance and service done. Oil and filter changes, blade sharpening, greasing, all that stuff that you should do every year. I have quite a few customers who run snowblower attachments on their lawnmowers. So they come in every spring to have the snowblower taken off and the mower deck put back on. There's its mower deck. Tire chains taken off, weights removed. That's a suitcase weight on the back. So besides chainsaws, lawnmowers, keep us pretty busy as well, especially this time of year. More snow blowers, rototillers, some trimmers back there that I have to bring in. There's a walker, some Husqvarna, some John Deere's. Well, I better get back to work. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back at the workbench.